What's going on everybody? It's Eric Ray with it back here helping you take your game to the next level. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build an offensive scheme in Madden 18. Now, if this is your first time checking out one of my videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Make sure that you hit the bell icon so that you join the notification squad and never miss an upload. So for today, we're going to go over how to build a scheme in Madden 18. This has been a video that's been requested a lot. So I'm going to show you, you know, the basics of how you build a scheme that will, you know, give you a good offense and help you win more games in Madden 18. Now, this is going to take a little bit of time. This isn't something I can just show you in five minutes. So bear with me. I need to make sure that I cover all the bases here so that you fully understand how this thing works. So we'll be doing a shotgun scheme. Uh, for this particular video uh, if you want to see me do an under center scheme in the future and show you how to build one out of that just drop a comment below let me know so the number one thing you need to know when building a shotgun scheme is funny enough you need a good run play because you need a play to keep the defense honest you can't um you can't just pass every play even if you just run every you know every five or six plays you just need to keep them honest in the fact that okay you're not scared to run so when it comes to shotgun pretty much every shotgun formation is going to have an inside zone right if you go scroll through them, pretty much you'll see every formation, if you look through, it has an inside zone. So that's good. You definitely need an inside zone or like a halfback base. That's going to be your two like main between the tackles options and shotguns. Some formations have the base, but probably like 90% of them have inside zone. Either one will do. But the, the key here too is, this is the big one, is you need to make sure that the inside zone is one of your formation audibles. So you, you find a formation that you like, you come out in it. You test it out. So you want to hit X or square, depending on which system you're on, that pulls up your audibles. And the Y audible, we're on Xbox, so it's the Y audible. If you're on PlayStation, it will be your triangle audible. It's always going to be the run audible in the formation. So we see that in this formation, the outside zone is the run audible. So that is no good. We need it to be the inside zone. We need it to be the between the tackle uh, run. Because in shotgun, the, the off tackle runs typically aren't very good. The inside the tackle runs are better. And those are the runs we want to go to when we want to keep the defense honest. So we don't want to use that formation. You need to be able to access your run at any given time because you might come out in a pass play and they might be in quarters defense. The, the box might be super weak and it's just there for the taking. You need to be able to audible to your run play and take four to five yards up the middle every time if they give it to you. You need to be able to make you need to force them to keep more people in the box. And when they keep more people in the box, that's when it makes it easier for you to pass on the outsides. So. For this demonstration, we'll, we're going to use split close because I think this is the easiest formation to showcase how to build a scheme out of for beginners. Now, this formation has a halfback power row. This is an exception. This is a, a pretty decent shotgun run that is not between the tackles. There are exceptions here and there. But this formation also, we're in the Arizona playbook, so this formation in the Arizona playbook also has the fullback inside, which is pretty much an inside zone. So this is kind of a specialty formation because we have a run that goes right and a run that goes left slash up the middle so we have two runs they have to worry about most shotgun formations you won't have this but just having the run up the middle is fine but for this formation it just makes it that much better so we have the runs figured out next thing is you need to have a play action play that can play off your run because if you're just running the ball every time they're not going to be faked out but if they don't know that hey maybe he might play action maybe he might run that little bit of hesitation by your opponent is what's going to help you get easier yards on him because he's not going to be sure he's going to have to play play it safe he can't just overcommit to the run or overcommit to the pass so we see that we have the paf slide so that looks like a pretty good play so outside of that you want to look for plays that have big routes that have routes that you can't play maker so you need routes like uh like posts and corner routes and deep crossing routes so we see paf slide okay it has a post route it has a little bit of a deeper crossing route so that's good uh, we look through and then we see a uh, halfback wheel, for example. We have a post and a corner on the same play. And we have a wheel route. So those are all unique routes. So, okay, those look like some good plays to, to scheme around. So now we need to make sure we find the passing plays that look good. And we say, okay, do these plays attack different areas of the field? Because we can't just attack one side of the field. So we look at PAF slide and we see that this play predominantly attacks the left side of the field. Four of the five routes are going to the left. So that's good. We look at halfback wheel and we see that... The majority of the routes on this play are going to the right. The post is going to the right. The uh, the corner routes going to the right sideline, and we have a flat going to the right. So that looks good. So we have the plays that we, we that attack different parts of the field. We have a play action. We have a run. So now we need to figure out what are our formation audibles, so that we know what plays we have to come out in. So I already know what they are. So I'm gonna come out and full back inside here, and we're gonna see. We're gonna either hit X or square, depending on your system. Pull up your audibles. So we see. Okay, the power O is an audible. That's good. We see that halfback wheel is an audible. That's good. 
and we see that the PAF slide is also our play action audible. So that's perfect. So that means we can come out in the fullback inside every play and we can access every play we need by pulling up our audibles. So there's no reason for us to ever come out in the power row or halfback wheel or PAF slide because we can always access this play. We can come out in the fullback inside or maybe another passing play. If we find another passing play that we like too, we can come out in that. And if for whatever reason we don't like the look that the defense has given us, we can say, okay, let's switch to halfback wheel. That's perfect. So knowing your formation audibles is key because it, it gives you the ability to have the most plays at your disposal at any given time. You don't ever need to come out and halfback wheel when you can access it from your audible screen. You can maximize the amount of plays at your disposal by understanding what plays are your audible. So now we got to test the passing plays out. That's really the final step. We need to make sure this is very key. You need to make sure that your main passing plays, at least, at least two of them, right? You need to make sure that they can beat every basic coverage in the game. You don't want to play that can just beat man or can just beat cover two because that does you no good. If you have a play that can just beat cover two and you come out and they run man, the play is useless. Or they run cover three, the play is useless. You need a play that can beat all of the basic coverages. So at that point, it's just about you making the correct read. That's something, you know, I can't teach you that. You have to just learn that by getting comfortable and playing games. But if you know that, hey, my play can beat all of the basic coverages that my opponent can throw at me, it's just about you making the read and finding the open man. And that is, that is how you succeed. You don't want a one-trick pony play. You can have those plays mixed in here and there, but your main plays need to beat every coverage. So now we test it out. So we're going to look at PAF slide first, and we're going to, you know, we're going to break down against each coverage. So we have cover two. So first thing we want to analyze is can we change this play to make it better? We don't want to take the post route or the crossing route off the play because those, those are unique routes. We have Moncrief over here on a deep out route. We can hot route that, so that's not a special route. So we may say, well, we can put him on a streak, and that'll that'll pull some zones deep and maybe open up some underneath stuff for us. Or we might say, maybe we put him on a slant, because now we have multiple crossing routes and that could confuse our opponent. Maybe we put him on a drag. You play around with it and you find out which setup you like best. So for this, I'll just say, I'm going to put him on a streak. Okay, so we're going to try it against cover two. So Okay, running against cover two, and that dude just... <laughs> Nobody picked that guy up. I don't know what's going on there. So we'll run that again. That was weird He just walked straight in so we'll try this against cover two and it's they let him come in again Okay, so we see they go into the flat over there in the cover two kind of a tight throw There's not a lot of yards there to be gained so that that didn't work too well um, It was a decent check down, but it wasn't anything crazy. So we checked the other routes And we say okay, we got this flat route over here. There was a lot more wide open We got about six yards before contact. So we say okay that works for cover two. Let's see if we have anything else that works. So, call the play action. We see, okay, we can hit B. I, I threw that way too late, by the way. But we see that he the middle of the field is actually pretty open there. I'll run that one more time because that was just a bad demonstration. We'll see that the middle of the field is wide open. So we say, okay, we can hit B. Uh, you know, just make sure you get it there before he crosses into the other guy's zone. And you're good to go. So, okay, we have two routes that can beat cover two. That's good. That's, that's solid. We, we have two options. So let's check the post and see. So we see, okay, the linebacker runs with the post there, so that post might not be an option for us. It's good to know that. Now now we want to test it out and make sure, can it work against a hard flat cover two? Because we have underneath options. So let's say they play underneath because we've been hitting the flats or hitting that crossing route. So now they play underneath. And we see, okay, we can hit the post when they play underneath because they are telling the defense to focus on the underneath routes. So good, we can beat every version of cover two. That's great. Now we go to a cover three. Run the same setup. Oh, I accidentally uh, ran the ball there. And that's that. And that's exactly how you would mix it in in game, though. You know, you pass, you pass, you pass, and then it's like, oh, here comes the run, and now they have to worry about that, too. But anyway, so cover three, we see, okay, now this route works really good for cover three, so that's good. We can hit that. And you just go through this with every route. So, I mean, there's other routes that work on this play against cover three, but just to not make this video incredibly long, I'm going to kind of try to skip forward a little bit. So then we look at man, and we say, okay, we need to at least find something here that beats man. So we see, okay, T.Y. Hilton is wide open, and they're just not blocking anybody. Uh, this is ridiculous. But we saw T.Y. Hilton's wide open, so let's run it one more time just, just to make sure. Because against man, you want to run it multiple times. So we see there the coverage is a little tighter, but he still beat him. Against man, you definitely want to run it you know, multiple times and make sure because every once in a while man defense will defend the route, but you want to, you want to see the probability. Okay. So we see that one time he was wide open. The second time it was tighter. Okay. The third time he was pretty much wide open again. And then you want to figure out, okay, do I need an elite receiver there? Uh, T Y Hilton's an elite route runner. So you want to plug different receivers in and say, okay, do I need a great route runner there to beat man defense or can 
any wide receiver beat man defense there. So you want to know who you need in what spots, where you need your best route runner, or where you need your fastest guy. So that's something you also want to check into. But this play checks out. It beats all the coverage. So okay. It be it beats every, you know, basic coverage that we will face. So now we go to the other play, okay? We need to make sure this can beat coverages. Now again, you don't want to take the post or the corner off this play or really these flat routes, because those are all unique routes. The in route that TY Hilton is on is the one you mainly would want to adjust. So you could put him on a streak, you can put him on a slant, uh, you could put him on a drag. What you, you have to do what works best for you. My my personal favorite on this play is I like to put him on a short in route, because I like having a check down over the middle. So that's me, but if you find that a slant's better for you or a drag, that's what you do. You have to build it yourself. I'm just doing it you know, the way I would do it. So we say, okay, cover two. We see, okay, flat's wide open here. We can get about four, maybe five yards before contact there in cover two. So that's a decent option. We need to see what else can beat cover two on this play. We see that, okay, we have a post, so we need to try that. Oh, yeah, post kill cover two. Okay, so this is a cover two destroyer. We can get a one-play touchdown on this if they don't account for our post. That's something our opponent has to think about. That's a, This is a really good play for us now. Uh, let's see if we have anything else that beats cover two. And we see, okay, we got the in route over the middle. That's a nice little check down. Got us about 10 to 12 yards. So, okay, this play destroys cover two. And you make a note of that, that this play especially destroys cover two. So if we're playing someone that likes to run a lot of cover two, maybe we should use this play a little bit more. So now you do the same thing. You find cover three. Okay, this guy's wide open against a cover three. That's great. You go through and you figure out what other routes beat cover three. You go to man. And you see what routes routes beat man. As long as you have you know at least one route that can beat every coverage. If you have multiple routes that beat every coverage, then you should run that play more often. It should be your staple. But as long as you have at least one route that beats every coverage, you you know you're good enough. So we say okay, this beats man here. And then we saw that that on that play the post route kind of got covered by man. So what you want to do? I'm gonna show an example here. You want to back out of this and you want to say, is the post route bad against man or is Moncrief just not good enough? So we're going to put T.Y. Hilton over there, better route runner, better release, just better overall wide receiver. We're going to put him over there, and we're going to play man again because we need to know, hey, is this is this play or is this route good against man, or is it only good against man with the right wide receiver? So now we put a good wide receiver there, and we see, okay, he's open. So let's run it one more time. Let's make sure it's not a fluke. But, you know, in real, in real life when you're doing this, you know, run it more than two times to be extra sure. But for this video, we're going to run it a second time. We see, okay, good wide receiver. He kind of, okay, he got defended a little bit there. Maybe this isn't the best route. So that's when you keep running it over and over and over. You run it 10, 20 times, and you see, okay, if you run it 20 times and it gets open 15 out of 20, you know it's probably a pretty safe bet. So we run it a third time. We see, okay, we got a, we got a little bit of separation, but you, you play around with it, and you see how many, how many routes can beat each coverage. And once you have that down, now you have a scheme. You know that you have multiple plays. You need at least two plays that attack different sides of the field. One of them at least has to be a play-action play, and you need at least a run, and you need to be able to access some of these plays from your formation audibles. When you do this, this is what makes it tough on your opponent because they never know. If you're in the same formation and you're only running one play, they're going to be able to defend it because they know what play is coming. But when you're mixing in four and five plays and they all attack different parts of the field, that's what makes it tough to stop you. That's why on my videos sometimes when I post a money play and every once in a while there's somebody might come in the comments and say, oh, I, I would do this, 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 and that to lock this play up. But they're not think they're thinking surface level. They're not thinking that hey, this is one play. Now, what if I run four other plays out of the same formation, and you need to adjust differently to stop every single one of those plays? Now you're lost. If you think that this is the only play I'm going to run, you're wrong. But some people do play that way, so that's why it's important for you to mix in as many plays as possible. You know that you're comfortable with to make it tough for your opponent to say, okay, he's going to adjust this way to stop halfback wheel. But if he does that, and you run the PAF slide. That's going to be wide open because the way you adjust to stop PAF slide is not the way you adjust to stop halfback wheel. So that's how you build a scheme. Those are the basics. Definitely play around with different formations. Try it out. And I guarantee you once you get comfortable doing this, it will take your offense to a whole nother level. And it will be a lot harder for you to get stopped when you're playing these online games. So if you guys enjoyed this video, as always, just drop a like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.